a lot of radio receivers we used had quite rudimentary dials. It was impossible to accurately gauge the frequency that you were tuned to. With cheaper receivers, you could estimate the frequency to maybe the nearest 100 or 200 kilohertz. And that was on a good day. Even with better gear, such as made for the amateur bands, getting within 5 or 10 kilohertz dial resolution was tough. And even if your dial resolution was okay, accuracy, which is what you really wanted, was another thing. The dial might read spot on, but if the VFO has drifted, then you'll still be on the wrong frequency. Being on frequency is not just a nice to have, but also a must to have, especially if you held a novice license. How do you know you're a spot on frequency? One solution many people used was a crystal calibrator. As its name suggests, the crystal calibrator uses a crystal as a frequency reference. In this video, I'll take a look inside and give you a demonstration of how a crystal calibrator works. The calibrator starts off with the quartz crystal at 4 MHz. The oscillator IC is a CMOS 4011. Following on from the 4 MHz generated by the crystal oscillator is another chip, a 4013. That happens to comprise of 2 divided by 2s. That gives you a 2 MHz output and a 1 MHz output. Then following on from that is another IC, a 14518. That has 2 divided by 10s. So the idea is that from 4 MHz you can divide by 2 to get 2 MHz and also 1 MHz and the 1 MHz output of this goes into the 14518 to get 100 kHz or 10 kHz which is the lowest this calibrator goes down to. On the left is the rotary switch. That picks off the output that you need from the calibrator. The output from the rotary switch goes to a potentiometer which is a level control and then there's shielded coax and that goes to an output connection. As you can see I used an RCA, BNC's being too expensive for my student budget. The crystal calibrator needs to be calibrated itself in order to provide accurate results. You normally do that by getting an AM radio with a shortwave band, one that covers 5, 10 or 15 megahertz. Set it up to tune the WWV, WWVH time and frequency station. That's an accurate frequency, so you can use that as a reference for your calibrator. You turn the calibrator off, tune for a strong signal from WWV, WWVH, then turn the calibrator on. You may need to attenuate the calibrator's signal so that it's not much stronger than WWV. If the calibrator is off frequency, you will hear a beat note. It might be 1 or 2 kilohertz if it's quite a long way out, or it might just be a few hertz if it's pretty close. You adjust the trimmer so that there's no beat note at all. Then you'll know that the calibrator is spot on frequency and can be used to make frequency measurements with receivers that you have. The moment of truth. Does this calibrator still work? I've got an antenna wire, a shortwave receiver, and a battery. We're on 8 megahertz. Let's say we need to locate 10 megahertz. As we're on the 4 megahertz output from the calibrator, that's not good enough. So we need to drop down to 2 megahertz. We've still got our signal on 8 megahertz. It's a bit weaker. And here we have found 10 megahertz. Supposing we need to actually find 9 megahertz. For that we need to go down to 1 megahertz output. And here's 9 megahertz. By the way, if we want to find 40 meter band, we've got pulses every megahertz. So this is 7 megahertz. 
if we want to find 7.1, we drop down to 100 kilohertz. There are signals much more frequently across the dial. So that's our look at frequency calibrators. They were an indispensable item around the shack, and in some countries, your license conditions required you to know what frequency you're transmitting on. If you had a calibrator and a receiver, even if its dial was pretty rudimentary, then you'd be able to establish that frequency. A crystal calibrator like this is still useful for those who build, repair and restore simple receivers. There's hardly any parts. Just a quartz crystal on a frequency like 1, 2, 4, 8 or 10 MHz, an IC for the oscillator, and two or three other ICs that operate as frequency dividers. It should only cost you a few dollars to build, and is a recommended project for the beginner who wants to get a few more pieces of equipment around the shack.